Shalom, family. I'm your brother, Sarah. This is the Israelite Schools of King and Priest with another video of No Chaser. We're going to give it to you straight and direct. Before we get started, let me give all praises to the Most High. All right. Through the grace of His Son, Yeshua. Give uh, acknowledged brothers in the truth out there in the highways and hedges, putting in His work, putting their life on the line for the Most High. All of the sisters that's married to these brothers, being faithful to their husbands, being homemakers, diligent in the truth, diligent in the truth. And all praises to the brothers who haven't made it yet, but putting in work to find themselves worthy to be out in the hedges and highways. All right. Um, with that, if you hear any noise, I live by the airport, so, so I'm sorry I can't help that planes fly low sometimes but uh today i want to talk to you about the kingdom of god all right the kingdom of god there's a lot of misconceptions about the kingdom of god hopefully i can help clear up some of them you hear the christians talk about the kingdom of god but when you ask how do you get it they have no answers for you what do you do to receive the kingdom of god they have no answers for you and it's simple but before we get deep into it I'm going to go ahead and start with Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we have to first seek the Most High's wisdom, knowledge, and understand, him, and understand his wisdom and knowledge, right? And what is the wisdom and knowledge? That's his law, statutes, and commandments. Once we receive it and understand it and apply it in our life, then the kingdom of God is within you. But, like I said, let every man be a lie and the Bible be true. So we're going to get into this here. Remember I said the kingdom of God is within you, right? So let's go to Luke 17, 20, and 21. Luke 17, 20, and 21. And it reads, And he, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Right? Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, oh, it's like, lo here, lo there, look here, look there. That's simply what it's saying. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So how do we get the kingdom of God within you? Hmm? How do we get the kingdom of God within you? We just said it. By applying his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? Because you already know that the, the kingdom of the, 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 uh, the, 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 the body is the temple of God. What do you say? Any man that defiles the body, he, the Lord will destroy, right? Why? Because the kingdom of God should live within you. And then if the kingdom of God live within you, that means we fall in law, statute, and commandments. And if we fall in law, statute, and commandments, then ultimately bring us together again as a kingdom, as a nation. That's how we became the kingdom of God. By following his law, statute, and commandments. Why? Because I'm supposed to love my neighbors like I love myself. I won't treat them the way I don't want to be treated. If my brothers are low and in need and I have it, then it was for me to give to them. There should be no man on the lowest if we are a unit, a kingdom, following the law, statute, and commandments, right? But, you know, like I said, um, the, the temple, the body, your body is not yours. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to bring that out. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Let's bring that out real quick. The temple of your body does not belong to you. All right. Let's see. 6, verse 19. What? Know ye, that, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Which is in you? Which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, which means, which means this Holy Spirit 
you, 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 the, the body, the body that's supposed, the Holy Spirit that's within your body, this body don't belong to you, all right? When Christ died for our sins, we no longer belong to ourselves. Well, we don't even belong to ourselves even before then, but let's just keep it right here in the words for the Christians can understand. When Christ died for us, we no longer became our own. We became his, his living sacrifice. So we must live right for his sake because then why would we why would we uh 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 allow this man to die for my sins only to be proud to be a sinner and you hear that all the time I, I i'm a sinner and god loved me but god don't love you and he do still don't require you to sin and then and then they be like well the law's done away with i'm under grace well how could you sin you know what you know what let, let me bring this out real quick, cause you 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 sinner, right? Let's let's put Romans, three thirty one, right? I'm not under. We're no longer under the law. We're no un, no longer under the law. I am a sinner, and we are saved by grace. Well, let's see what this says here. And this is after Christ has died, right? Cause he has remember he died as according according to the Christians, he died. To get rid of our sins and the laws done away with, right? Well, let's see. Romans three, chapter thirty. Romans chapter three, verse thirty-one. Do we then make void of the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So, what did that mean? How can you? Uh, how could the law be done away with and we are still sinners? If I, Now, I'm asking you this question. When I'm going to bring out the answer later, if you don't have the answer right now, then that means you're not really following where I'm going with this, right? So how could we be sinners if the law is done away with? All right, let's go to Romans 6. We're going to read 1 and 2. All right, it's the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Meaning, how could we, how could we be a new creature in Christ and continue to sin? That's impossible. Right, we're going against the very teachings of Christ, and I'm going to go through uh, um, uh, one more. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Verse 15. What well, then shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not, verse 16, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servant to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So here's the, this, this, that's the point. That is the point. How could, how could uh, we be a new creatures in Christ, be under the grace and still uh, and the law's done away with, but still be sinners. You you cannot be. Let me let me give you one more before we break this down of understanding this sin, right? Romans seven and seven. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. Now here we go. We opening this up. How could we be sinners if the law's done away with? Because if, we, if it wasn't for the law, then I would not have known sin, right? And then continuing, uh, for I had not known lust except the law had said, thou shall not covet. So how do we know that we're breaking the law through lust if the law did not say not to lust after, which is covet, right? That's, this, is, this is the things that we need to pay attention to and understand getting straight to these points right right 
And then here's the last one right here to, to, to break down this law. Because like I asked you earlier, how could we be sinners if the law is done away with? Let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Again, with all the noise, I apologize. I live next to the air, airplane. But the grace of the Most High still rise above all. All right. The book of 1 John chapter 4. I mean, chapter 3, verse 4. And it reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. So if you're a sinner, you transgress the Mosaic law that you're stating we're no longer under. It's no longer abide. Why? For sin is the transgression of the law. So in order to sin, you have to be transgressing the law that you said no longer apply. Now, this is all in the New Testament. This is not, this is, so, so for those Christians who state, that, oh, you always read the Old Testament and the New Testament done away with, well, this is the New Testament supporting the Old Testament talk, talk, uh, text. Because what is the law? There is no new law. There's the same law from uh, Leviticus, Exodus. Deuteronomy this is the same laws from back in the Old Testament. So how could you sin if there's no laws to transgress against? For sin is the transgression of the law. Now let's get back on track. This is how we know the kingdom of God is with you when you're following the laws, statutes, and commandments. This is how we know. So let's go back to Matthews 19 and 23. Matthews 19, verse 23 and 24. The book of Matthews, chapter 19, verse 23 and 24. And it reads, Then Yeshua said unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than the rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the rich man's number one priority is not seeking the laws, statutes, and commandments and applying them. It's chasing after the money. It's chasing after the gold and riches that gave him his prestigious, uh, uh, that gave him his identity in this world. So it's easier for a camel to walk through the needle of an eye. For those who don't understand what a needle of an eye was back in the ancient days, to enter into the kingdom, the little overhead needle is where you had to walk through to enter into the kingdom, right? The little, what we call now, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's it, it, the, the camel, we had to take everything off the camel's back and the camel had to crawl through the needle to enter into the kingdom. Otherwise, we would have to tie a camel outside of the kingdom. That's what he mean by the eye of a needle, the entranceway into our kingdom, into the gates. All right. So he said it's easier for uh, a camel to enter into this eye needle, eye of a needle, than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And if we just establish that the kingdom of heaven is within you, then that means he is not focused on the law, statute, and commandments and applying it. He is focused on his riches. He got his focus somewhere else, which breaks the number one commandment. You should have no other God before God, Father Yah. You know what I'm saying? So this, this is the understanding that we need to get right here, right? And then uh, let, let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark 1. Mark 1, 14. Uh, chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 and then I'm going to close out pretty soon I just got a few more after this Mark 1 chapter, four, Mark, chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 now here we go uh, now after that John was put in prison, Yeshua came into Galilee preaching the gospel of kingdom, of the kingdom of God. All right. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. 
the kingdom is at hand. So right now is the time to turn away from the wicked transgressions of the law and apply them. Right? That's what he's saying. Believe in his law, statutes, and commandments so that we can be free. We can be saved. We can be protected. You know, nothing comes up against us. This is the thing that, that, that Yeshua was preaching in, to them. The, since now that we know that the kingdom of heaven is within. But the only way the kingdom of heaven will be within you is to be abiding by these laws, statutes, and commandments. So that's what he went in there teaching them. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The laws and statutes and commandments is at hand. It's time for you to start applying these things, right? Let's go to Mark 4 and 11. And it reads, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. See, because this is the mystery that the kingdom of heaven is within you as long as we are applying the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. It is within you, but only you know the understanding of that. This is why a lot of people preach in the kingdom of heaven without explaining what it is and can't because it's a mystery, right? They can't really break it down. Um, but let's continue. Number 11. Uh, and I'm starting all over. And he said unto them, unto you it is given. And this is Yeshua speaking to the, to the crowd, and to his disciples, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. What? Because if it was for anyone to enter, uh, to oh, if this was for everyone and anyone, then he wouldn't have a chosen set of people. He wouldn't only known the children of Israel and the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the house of Judah. He wouldn't only known that family, because remember. If it was given for everybody, it wouldn't be parables for them. It wouldn't need any. It wouldn't be any need for parables. Okay, so let's uh let's go let's go back to Luke eight, ten and twelve, just to support that. See, this is how we know. See, because if that was that was Mark saying from his point of view. Now let's understand what what Luke said from his point of view. Because if they was there together, then the story must add up, right? Luke chapter 8, 10 and 12. And it reads, And he said, Unto you it is given the mystery of God, of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they may not understand. Meaning, like, it doesn't matter what I show them, they're not going to get it. Right? No matter what I tell them, they won't understand. This is a mystery. This is why most Christians, again, cannot explain the kingdom of heaven. But they try to preach the gospel, but they cannot explain the kingdom of heaven. Let's continue. Now, the parables is this. The seed is the word of God, right? It's like it's like seed being planted in your mind and let the word and let the most high water it to, to give it its growth, its plentifulness, right? Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their mind, lest they should believe and be saved. So and then and then it's like once this word come out, then here's come a distraction. Then here comes something to take it very take it away. Like once we show it like me, showing you that this direction right here on the kingdom of God, right? And as I'm trying to tell you, uh 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 there's noise distraction in your background, your kids are messing with you, your wife is calling you for something, or your mom and your dad is is calling you, or friends are, are interrupting right now the very lesson that you're getting. This is what that means. Come and take that which was sown in the mind, right? But don't allow them to take the precious seed. That seed yields fruit. You would need that tree to eat from. This is the tree of life. Don't let them take the seed of your tree of life. Come on, and this is my last verse. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Let's see here. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. Verse 22. All right. Hmm. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 22. As for the mystery of God, and this is this is if you if you understand chapter two, we're speaking about the ungodly right now. So let me go ahead and give you that discla disclaimer, disclosure, and everything. Um, as for the mystery of God, they knew them not. Neither hope for they. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness, nor discern a reward. For blameless souls, which means they never even cared to seek the laws of God, never cared to understand and apply the laws of God, which in return, there's no way the statutes could be done, right? Because the wages of sin is death. But since you don't understand, since you don't care to know, there's no way we can apply the laws of God and his statutes for breaking it. If you have no understanding, again, I'm Brother Sarat Yasharala, and this have been a quick, no chaser, shalom.